we are going to return to a DeAndre Hopkins, who is uh, seventh overall in our consensus rankings. I have him at five. You have him at nine. Uh, why don't you go ahead and you can start off and just say your say your piece. Like I said, we've beat this a, a lot so far, uh, but just just sum, summarize why you are lower on him. I am. I am certainly am. And I hashtag nuts on the table. Feel feel strong about this. Uh, this is one of those things that I that I will not back off of this year. I do think that DeAndre Hopkins is going to lose targets, and I think that's the, one of the biggest reasons why. Uh, he averaged ten targets per game last year, thirty percent target share. That ain't happening this year. I, I can almost guarantee damn to you, he's not going to come right. anywhere close to that. I think it's more the line. On of 22 to 24 percent target share that's where i think he's going to come in that's a large amount of targets to lose he had 104 receptions last year which was second most 1165 uh, 1165 yards he was 11th in completed air yards seventh in red zone receptions with seven touchdowns and he averaged seven, 17.8 fantasy points per game now if you look at the roster last year for the for the texans Will Fuller missed a huge chunk of time last year. And who else was there? It was Kenny Stills who who didn't really do anything. Kiki Kuti. I mean, there was absolutely nobody there. So he was always the main target. However, now you move into Arizona, and I think this is where things are going to change. One, you start looking at this. Uh, the Cardinals um, are certainly committed to the run, right? Over the final three weeks of the season, the Cardinals went from 24 rush attempts per game to 30. They won two of those three games. The, the, Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald are still there. Both of them commanded 100 targets apiece. I don't think those are going to drop off uh, dramatically. So where are all these other targets going to come from for DeAndre Hopkins to get his 150, 160 targets? Because he is not somebody, at least that was used heavily as, as a deep threat. If you look at him, 97 of his 104 receptions were 20 yards or less, which was the third highest rate in the league. So he is somebody that, that eats on – or. He, that's at least how he was deployed in in Houston with somebody that was utilized as a short and intermediate route, right? The dude can catch anything. I love I mean I love DeAndre Hopkins a talent, but my problem is his volume. I don't think it's going to be there for him to hit that. I still think that he has a really strong floor, but I don't think he has the type of ceiling that we're looking for. Kyler only threw 542 pass attempts last year in 2019. I don't know how many more of those you can expect for him to get. Who is he taking targets from? Larry Fitzgerald, I still think, gets 80 to 90 targets. I think that you look at somebody like Christian Kirk, who's probably going to get around 100, 110. They still have guys there like Keyshawn Johnson and Andy Isabella. Kenyon Drake's going to get some. So some of those guys are going to get some. Not enough that's like it's going to affect DeAndre Hopkins, of course. But I just don't think that he's going to see that type of volume. That is my biggest problem with him. The Cardinals want to run the football. They are, they are a team that wants to establish the run. They are a team hashtag establish the run. And so with all those things considered, I just think that you are baking into where he is going. You are taking his absolute ceiling, and I think that's a problem. I don't think he's going to hit it. I think he's much more likely to come much much further down than that. And so that's why I have him at why, where I do. I get what you're saying, but I also think the fact of like their, the rushing toward the end of the year, I think that was more of a case of Cliff going with what they had versus what he wants, right? Like we, I think we all believe that we're going to see – the the offense at least progress a little bit more to what we thought we were getting with with cliff last year if you look at it uh arizona was 18th in pass attempts houston was 20th i think we can easily see kyler go over 600 passing attempts i mean we had nine teams in the nfl last year who did that i don't see why kyler could not be there this year i think the reason like i said why we saw it was the fact of like who was kyler be going to be throwing to last year so I, i definitely think that's a case where is he going to be getting the 160, 170 targets that he was getting in, in years past? No, I, I completely agree with you there. But I do think he can thrive as, a, as an efficient receiver. And I don't think the, the targets and the targets share that big of a deal. If we look at 2019, uh, the top 12 receivers from weeks 1 to 16 averaged 133 and a half targets. Um, Michael Thomas was the only receiver last year with over 150 to, or he was two. Yeah. He was the only one from weeks one to 16 that had over 150 targets. D hop sat at 150 on the nose and we had six wide receivers who were at or above that 25% market share threshold. And if you go back three years, that never just, that number goes up. But I think that's more of a trend of what we're going to see going forward. I don't think we're going to see the, 
200 target A, B, and Julio years anymore. I think our wide receiver ones for fantasy purposes are going to be living in that 140 to 160, occasionally like 170, 180 kind of guy. Um, 2018, we had eight receivers that were at or above 25%. 2017, that was nine. But I don't think we need to have guys who are at that, you know, 29, 30, 33%. Do we want that? Absolutely. But I don't think that's going to be a prerequisite for wide receiver one seasons going forward. I don't, the fact that he was the only one in that offense last year, because if you look to back to 2016, when Will Fuller was uh, drafted, he has, they have 41 games together and 21 games where it was just D hop. And his numbers are fairly similar. PPR points, he averaged about one more point per game with without Fuller on the field. His receptions obviously go up a little bit, the yards and everything, but it's not a it's not a massive discrepancy between the two. I think that that more or less sums up both of our did you have anything else you want to throw on there or do you want to move on? No, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's my biggest issue with DeAndre Hopkins. I love the player, and I think that if he was going a little bit later, uh, that I would feel a little bit more comfortable with it. But I just don't like what the volume that I that I that I see here that I'm projecting for this Cardinals offense, this passing offense, the four wide receiver sets, which is what we a big thing we talked about as well, which predicates uh, spreading the ball around. And I think with all those things considered, I just don't think DeAndre Hopkins comes close to that 30% target share or 104 receptions. So if that's not happening, he's gonna have to live off tight end or tight ends off touchdowns. And that, that is one of the most volatile stats to try to predict. So um, I, I try to follow the, the opportunity and I try to follow the volume. And I just don't think it's going to be there as much as it has been in years past. So that's